Hello to all of those who is involved in Zabbix development and maintenance. My name is Konstantin Yakovlev, and I am speaking here on behalf of Rin Central Company. We are Unified Communication is a service provider with presence on North America's and Europe's markets. We are proud to be on a bleeding edge of our segment. Second year in a row, Rin Central is recognized as a leader in Unified Communications by Gartner. As for me personally, I am production support engineer from St. Petersburg, Russia. Our team is responsible for system and monitoring analysis. Two years ago, when our team have joined Ring Central, we had about 5,000 of production hosts, and it was fine to get about 300 events per day. On a hard day, we had 1,000. We focused on issue investigation and event analysis, trying to find, appro find approaches to cover growing infrastructure monitoring. Now, we have 500 plus events visible to our operators as daily minimum. Guess what? We know how to handle them and not to miss any issue. As we spent about a year analyzing events and monitoring approaches, and we spent another year automating the things we've learned. Today, I'll share our vision on how to handle rising pressure of monitoring effectively with several tools we've developed, revealing their design. But I'd like to bring you a few statistics first. So this is an outage, network outage particularly. Every bar here is a quantity of events spawned during a minute interval. Let's see what operator feels about it. So this is our good old solution. As our architecture counts several Zabbix instances, such tool is a must to have all currently active events on a single page. And you may see that it's kind of challenging goal to find out the cause of outage from hundreds of active alarms. So I believe quite all of engineers here are familiar with any kind of repetitive events. We call them problems, so please consider any problem word during the next 30 minutes as a repetitive alarm. Dependent on environment complexity, Dependent on environment complexity, up to 90% of events may be produced by only 10% of triggers variety. The thing is, problems have a rotation due to their causes are being fixed. And another really annoying thing in any monitoring system is flapping. So again, depending on environment, you may have really high percentage of events that have age below two minutes. One may consider that those events are part of problems but we should treat and handle them separately. In first place, flapping events are below recognition threshold for the operator. And in second place, issue may be treated as resolved when flapping event clears, but it's not true in some cases. Here you may see, here you may see the result of North America maintenance window normalized. So we have internal change management solution called CMP. The thing is, all of the hosts maintained are put in Zabbix maintenance window automatically by CMP as change starts. So events from those are not shown on this saturation. But we still see this spike here during maintenance window. And let's take a closer look. First of all, we have dependencies between different components. Uh, so we called host types components. So in case we maintain hosts of some component, we may and do get events from related component hosts. So that's why we see these orange bars here. The second, the second issue uh, here in the very beginning of maintenance window, you can see kind of spike as well. So let's be, here, let's be fair here. Sometimes people just forget to start change requests on CMP in timely manner. So we do see this spike due to maintenance host are not yet put to maintenance mode by the time change starts. And the third case here, in the very end of the maintenance window, is related to metric polling intervals. When the change is finished, Zabbix maintenance window is being automatically closed, and right after this, we receive alerts related to metrics being in the middle of polling interval, and still showing old value. So yeah, we do miss forced metric poll in Zabbix, so we could reevaluate trigger state on demand. And in, terms, in, in terms of, and in terms of event management, we should not forget about logging. So we believe that precise issue logging is a must to have
transparent operations. But it takes a lot of time. See yourself. After any event has come, operators should acknowledge it, file JIRA, apply verification or workaround, escalate login progress to JIRA. So maybe it's not a lot for a single event, but if you have thousands of events per day, it will be nearly impossible to handle all of them in a proper way. So what do we have? A lot of triggers firing here and there due to problems, incident, maintenances. Anyone who looks at such like monitoring and tries to figure out what's going on here at some moment may become like, because it's nearly impossible to find the root cause from hundreds of events. So really, what do we want? We do not want to be confused or mix it up or what Jackie Chan. We want to be ninja style Jackie Chan, confident and fast Jackie. It was a gift here, but it is PDF, so <laughs> sorry guys. Okay, so first of all, what our bosses want? Availability, 5.9, so it to be precise. Pretty challenging goal, I'd say. It requires a force on different parts of development and operation pipeline. Therefore, entering the project, we focus it on following. First of all, we should decrease overall events quantity, considering growing environment. In second place, we should increase monitoring quality and accuracy. And in third place, decrease issue processing costs, and by all of this, to decrease mean time to repair. Okay, we have some general goals set. How do we achieve them? There are two main rules starting from here for the guy who is working with monitoring system. The first is to go with monitoring standardization and precise trigger definition. And we like to have perfectly and standardized monitoring. But let's be realistic. It's a severe goal to achieve just because of fact People do things differently, and developers are people. We do not want to limit them in the way they develop monitoring part of their applications. Furthermore, having as many development teams as we have, standardization process would last for ages. So everyone likes simple solutions. And considering this, we decided to go with result of Zabbix as an application, with Zabbix events. particularly with Zabbix events processing. processing. Uh, the main idea of presentation is to let you guys know that small efforts put in proper, proper directions may increase your monitoring quality dramatically. Coming closer to the solution details, I want to bring you some prerequisites for the project. As a team, we have a lot of experience in monitoring from operator's point, point of view. And issue investigation is our daily duty still. So desiring to make our personal and colleagues work easier, we went with following, following automation to toolset. So Zabbix 2.2 API is a source of data for our system. Here I'd like to pause and say thanks to Zabbix developers. Really, guys, your API is awesome, and it's well documented. We do appreciate it. As you can see, uh, the next one is a Galera cluster uh, running over MySQL. And the heart of our application is Laravel framework. So this is pretty it on tools we, we use. So no specific tools at all, as you can see. So we call our, called our project PSP, standing for Production Support Portal. Not original, yet rememberable. A few things to mention regarding PSP architecture. We are highly available. Our application includes web UI and scheduled jobs. We have PSP integrated with in-home automated deployment system with remediation capabilities, known error database with verifications and workaround procedure for network operation stuff, in-home vCenter inventory with relations between virtual machines and their hypervisors or storages. So mentioned before, in-home change management solution, CMP, and Jira for issue tracking, and of course, Zabbix instances. So 
That was a brief description of what we want and which technologies we have to achieve our goals. As it was shown before, the impact of problems or repetitive events may reach up to 90% of event count. So let's start with problem management automation. To navigate in event flow and make events analysis on demand, we need to collect our events and build some interface to search through event history. After this is done, we need some tool to track problems, uh, to have JIRAs, alerts, Zabbix configuration related, united under single entity called problem case. Furthermore, we'll need to have a person who will go through top daily events and make root cause analysis for each one. So any new problem would eventually be processed under problem management. Basically, event collector is a job running every minute on using event get API method to collect uh, any new events across Zabbix instances. In more details, we enrich events with related hypervisor uh, and storage on fly. And we count their age using internal PSP logic. That is another little thing we do miss in Zabbix API. So it doesn't provide age for the event. So we've collected some data to the database. Let's design user interface for it. What features should it have? What, what do we want to see? We want to see some statistics visualiza visualization first. We want to have flexible search of events with filters by any property. We want to have an ability to navigate through history and narrow the selection by click. We want to have maximum delay to real-time data less than one minute. And we want, to be, we want interface to be friendly and allow non-technical staff to be able to use it. So do you like pies as we like them? Here it is. Here you may see pretty clear search section where you may apply time range and any filter if you need to search something. You may apply regular expression filtering or excluding search. Also, you may export search results and ex as an Excel file. Let's try and see if we can find something interesting. Well, actually, we have one particular case on our mind. Okay, here it is. The most significant part here is saturations by properties we consider important. And what can we see right away? So the age of most events equals to polling interval. So we may consider these events as flopping. From here, we can already see two actions that can be made. One is to avoid floppiness by changing trigger configuration. And two is to review server logs and find the cause of failures. And after this, we may pass the issue to monitoring and development teams. OK, what's next? Saturation by time which is commonly used and very helpful visualization for any time series. By the way, you may narrow the time range clicking on the bar here. Finally, a little bit lower, <laughs> we, have, we have additional uh, situations which may help in some specific cases. And the next we have a table with filtering and sorting. So, now we've provided operations with powerful tool for investigation and became able to analyze events on demand. Actually, most statistics shown at the beginning of this speech was collected with this tool. But it was not enough to just behold and investigate results uh, of some system activity. That's why we added a superstructure about event search. Problem management has taken its place to care of repetitive and flapping events. So the concept was following. We made daily report showing top daily alerts and triggers by name. So, and then we started to fill it every day with root cause analysis results for each entry. So now you can see the report itself. Uh, the link here on triggers column 
refers to event search for last 24 hours, filtered by a particular trigger name to ease investigation. So reporter investigates entries one by one and fills their findings to comment column as an object related to a problem, for example, JIRA or change request. Sometimes, like now, for example, operator will have a guess uh, if we have already opened a JIRA related to a problem. As new comment is added by the operator, we create so-called problem case in PSP immediately and then process it according to the type of related object. For example, if report entry is related to a single incident, we'll close problem case right away, as we are not interested in such alert being in problem management scope. So as we see, daily top event report is a starting point for problem management itself. Furthermore, we can tag all of these events present, present in report. We may tag it with appropriate problem case. So after all, we could tear them apart. Well, as I mentioned, we operate problem cases. The place where problem cases live is called problem management dashboard. Here we have our cases with a number of columns. I'd like to review most interesting. So the first is a case status. So it's used to have a have point of, uh, to have a, Sorry. <coughs> so um, st status is used to have an overview of stage of problem resolution. Related JIRA columns and related JIRA information is, is located in several columns. So we could have it on top. And counters of related events for last and previous week with the trend is located already uh, uh, as well here. So. All of this just to have an information on top during problem management meetings, which is another important part of the process. So to have no problems with problem management, we've uh, chosen following flow. Blue blocks here are for problem manager person actions. Depending on situation, permissions, and investigation abilities, manager will escalate the problem to one or several teams Next, if we consider the trigger not relevant, it will be approved for suppression by on-call operations technician and then suppressed by problem manager. To be clear, by suppression, we meet hiding the event spawned by irrelevant trigger from the operator. Okay, so since everyone is informed about the issue and operators are free of annoying alerts, problem manager waits for fix being rolled out. Sooner or later, fix arrives to the production, and after this, uh, problem manager should verify that trigger is not longer firing as it was previously. And if it's okay and satisfied with trigger behavior, then we may close the case. And after this, all the suppression applied under it will be rolled back. So. We've already reviewed one problem using event search. Looks like the case for it is already in place. Let's look inside. So here you may see pretty the same information as on the dashboard. But on the right part, you may see related triggers. So their state, count of, of those, and number of events for current and previous week with a trend. So you could easily see what's going on with the problem right now. So here we, here we can suppress our trigger and remove it from the case in case they are not related. So suppression is a really powerful tool here. So we, we really ha had a pain with a repetitive alarming. And to, we, we could not uh, fix any trigger right away. So right now we can just suppress it and do not spend a lot of time for it. Okay, so we've learned that uh, events history 
Um, that event history helps us to manage problems and investigate incidents. As we've shown, sometimes NOC and operations technicians cannot handle a lot of concurrent events and cannot figure out the cause of outage just from active triggers. As an answer, we suggest events processing and UI, which helped us to gain root cause vision. And yes, we are automating as many manual actions as we can. In fact, we need a single screen incident management application so that anyone from operators to manager, managers could overview situation easily and interact with the system rapidly and smoothly. Just quick overview of basic incident management. I've mentioned some steps from this flow at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, it's, it's worth to mention that the state issue resolved maybe reach it from any other state of this diagram, in case the event clears. Okay, so how did we design a tower up? Essentially, the easiest way. Console is the name for the page operator sees. It displays currently active alerts. But first of all, how do we collect currently active alerts? We work it pretty much with event get previously to figure out that sometimes OK event may not be generated in Zabbix. Considering this, we could not rely on events coming on one by one. As in this case, we'd have some events stuck on console due to OK event for those have never been generated. This behavior has a relation to a trigger being removed while having problem state in first place. But also, I can see that there might be some issues with our good old Zabbix 2.2. Not sure about it. So let me be clear here. We do not process event stream. We work with system state. For current state evaluation, we decided to go with trigger get API method first and even get after. Every minute we collect all the triggers having problem state from all Zabbix instances. And after this is done, we collect appropriate events as we need acknowledged data they contain. Once we've collected events, we may enrich, process, and finally group them using different methods. I will describe a slide later. Term enrich and process are related to console processor, which works directly with Zabbix instances. And term group here is fully related to the aggregator, no matter that grouping is impossible without enrichment and processing. OK, then we have synchronization. We wait for the moment all the locations are done with processing. And as they are done, we store events to the database eventually. Now let's go through this flow from another, another end of it. So as an operator, you land to console web UI. We wanted our console to be smoothly updated, so we've used Ajax. So every five seconds, JavaScript asks our database on updates, and if it sees that, that all console processors are done for the minute, it calls console aggregator, which is basically making some additional processing and compiles JSON, which is next used to generate console HTML. Well, it's better to see something once than to hear a hundred times, right? Comparison is everything for cognition. So you've already seen how does our old solution looks during an outage. And now you see exactly the same outage on our new console. So differences are obvious. We have a lot less lines here. And furthermore, we have groups here. It's time to reveal how do we create those groups step, step by step. First of all, enrichment. We parse even data to get more properties. Hostname provides us location, shard, and the component. Acknowledge is being parsed for any related object stated by the operator. Also, we count age and time to acknowledge for each event to have KPIs. If we have Jira related to, in, to an event, we'll query Jira API to have a summary, a signee, and a time to resolve as well. If we have problem case opened for a particular event, we will enrich the event with it. We collect the data from CMP about oncoming, current, and just completed changes with host affected by these changes. So in case we have any event from host that is going to be maintained, for example, in five minutes, 
or was maintained five minutes ago will state that the event may relate to a particular change request, so operator could consider it. Okay, we are, we are getting close to 30 minutes. So, in case we have, um, so, sorry. We try to release any new triggers with verification and workaround steps provided. Uh, so, our knock operators could resolve any issue without escalation. So, in case we have any event that has corresponding a known error, we provide the known error database text, no error text to the event. So, our operators could handle it easily. So, for each host type, we have a responsible on-call operations team. So, we enrich event with this data as well. Um, when we have event that, um, obviously, it was the first idea about grouping, because you don't have to be a genius to figure out that if you have 90% of events spawned by 10% of triggers, obviously there will be a lot of events with the same names and from same hosts. So, this approach is great to have less lines on console, but doesn't bring us closer to root cause. So, this part of grouping is the last one. When we have an event that can be processed or grouped by other methods, we group it under name or host name, uh, under trigger name or host name, depending on existing group, group size. So, we call this smart grouping. Okay, hope everything is clear with the last part of uh, incident management and event processing. And let's go from the beginning now. So, for step one, uh, we use custom rules. Basically, rule condition is a par pair of two regular expressions, uh, one for host name and one for trigger name. Then it's a pair of timestamps for rule activity start and end. And finally, it's a set of actions applied to the event that matches condition. By now, we've developed three kinds of actions for custom rule. Group under rule name, overwrite any event property, and suppress. Yes, magic suppression I've mentioned. Without any changes to Zabi's configuration, we may add suppression rule right, uh, right, right from problem case and have it unsuppressed as the case is, is closed. Pretty convenient. If, we have, if, if event fits the rule conditions, it will be processed and excluded, excluded from any other processing. It applies to any step of processing. Each event is put to a single bucket only. We plan to implement another kind of rule here, dependency rule, which should allow us to group some pool of events under some predefined root event. That should provide us with flexi flexible dependencies, not interfering with Zabbix configuration, as we have a lot of discovery devices, items, and triggers. So step two here, we have network topology. In few words, it is a table with network device interfaces and, connected, and host connected to them. So in case our network device is down, all events from connected devices will get relation property. If the single interface is down, the host connected to this interface will have relation property as well. We plan to involve Mac learning so we could have more reliable and precise network topology. For step three, most of our services are located on virtual infrastructure. So we have topology of it. And if we have an event stating that some hypervisor or storage is feeling bad, all of the events from related virtual machines will be linked to infrastructure event. These topology processing steps do cover a big gap which we people have. We require, require a lot more time to find out that some alert, alerted hosts are sitting on the same storage or the same network switch. So even processing save, saves us a lot. And one more thing I've mentioned, uh, that flapping alerts are sneaky, as they do not stay active for a long time. So to handle those, we look behind and check if any short aged events happen too frequently for last hours. Then we compare current events to the list of known flapping ones 
And if the event matches flapping, we sustain such like event for 10 minutes on our console, marking them as flapping. Okay. By now we've passed it enrichment and processing and stored events to a database. This is the point where console aggregator and grouping takes its place. Here we create JSON to be displayed as console itself. So basically grouping is united, uniting events by property desired. In our case, we group events by custom rule in case it assumes grouping action, by network device or interface relation, by virtual infrastructure relation, by related object, by host name, or by trigger name. And that's pretty it about how do we get our system state more clear for operators. It's time to reveal incident management automation, the heart of single screen incident management application. So now uh, we, we see, basically we see the live console. Uh, I've compiled, we, we've compiled most frequent actions for, repeated by knock operators, and then we proposed a couple of integrations which allowed us to save a lot of time for knock. One important detail here, operator uses own credentials to log in to integ integrated tools, so all the actions are performed from operator's personal account. With our console, operator may acknowledge event and they do not even need to know which Zabbix instance has gener generated it. Speaking of 100 events and four Zabbix servers, we need some bulk actions. So yes, you may acknowledge single, grouped, or any custom bulk events using our console. Let me just show it. So, <clears throat> furthermore, we may create Jira here. We may restart the service using our ADS integration or restart the server. Sorry. Okay, so it's really good for uh, the, the last, the last uh, thing on NUC console that we have uh, ability to go back in time and see how exactly did console looked on some time in, in the past. So right now you can see that how, how, how did, did it look four days ago. Okay, so it's really good for audit and debugging purposes. So as a sum, We've developed single screen application for incident management and automation of knock routines. Still, we have a lot of things to put in here, but by now, our knock is pretty happy to get free of already automated routines, and our operation, operations are happy to have easy root cause analysis on fly without even reviewing event history. So, uh, the last part here, I, I, I believe, is pretty interesting, but uh, to, yesterday I've learned that it, it might be implemented with a module, Zabbix module. So we, we have a lot of uh, problems uh, due to trigger misconfigurations. So imagine if we could take old data and put new trigger expression on it to see how new trigger will behave on old real data. So basically that's what we did. So we get a payload from user, which means we get new trigger expression, some hosts, some items. Then we configure test host items and triggers on test Zabbix instance. Then we get data from production Zabbix and put it with Zabbix sender to test instance. And then we collect resulting events. So we may compare our current, current trigger with a new one we propose. And, uh, and show that one is more suitable for current situation. So this is the basic idea of uh, trigger analyzer. And I believe we should make some conclusion here. So using approaches described above, we've managed to decrease the level of technical experience for effective troubleshooting and investigation. We provided ops with convenient event history to event history navigation. We provide knock with event pre-analysis and routine automation. Uh, and the, the, the most important here is that we decreased MTTR on most sensitive parts of the incident management. Act, acknowledge to escalation and investigation. So this is pretty it. And thanks everyone for your attention. We appreciate any feedback. 
In case you are interested uh, in our solution, I may clear things up after presentation part of conference is over. That's it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, questions. Yep, yeah. guys. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's for you. And are there any questions? We still have some minutes more for the questions. I, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you for, for the presentation. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, the uh, event tax we're introducing in, in Zabbix 3.2. Do you think it will help you with the whole process? For example, the event enrichment and uh, finding root cause, cause analysis and this stuff. Yeah, I, I, I believe. Uh, it's a good basis to make new processes on, on, based on tax. Uh, so I, 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 did, I haven't used it uh, by now, but we definitely will try to use it and uh, see if it helps us. So uh, as, as far as I understood, it, it's a pretty good basis to make new processes on it. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. Um, how much development time has gone into this um, Sorry? integration? How much development time has gone into this well, integration? As, as I mentioned, we, we've uh, learned some approaches and made some analysis for about an, a year. And after, after it, it was a year of uh, implementation. So one for year. For a team of 20? For a team of three people. Okay. 